Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to It's All Knee. Today I am finally going to give you the tour of my retro collection, my action figure collection, my video game collection, something that I've been working on basically since 2020. Um, it's really grown over the last couple of years. I've talked about it a few times, more specifically on my social media, but decided that I wanted to get in here and just showcase it to you guys so you can kind of see what I'm working with. And let's just get right to it. I'll go ahead and turn you and show you uh, my little retro wall that I have right now. I got these really cool, uh, the Super Nintendo tapestry and this Game Boy tapestry from an eBay seller who actually prints these himself, which is really, really cool. Um, just adds that extra retro flair to my office space. We got Super Mario World for the Super Nintendo, which is one of my favorite games of all time. And then we have this beautiful, colorful 90s nostalgia piece, Wario Land, Super Mario Land 3 for the Nintendo Game Boy. Now this little thing here, this is uh, something I actually got for Christmas this year. It's Final Fight. This was a game um, done by Capcom for the Super Nintendo as well as arcade cabinets. This was a game that my brother and I rented religiously when we were growing up. We actually have a place here in the Des Moines area called Up Down, which is just filled with old school retro pinball machines, arcade games, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And they had Final Fight there. And my brother and I, Seth, we actually beat the entire game. We beat Final Fight. <laughs> we just beat this game. 20 years later. 20 years later, we finally beat this game. Actually, more than 20. And so that was really cool. Just a really fun piece of our childhood that we actually were able to finally put to rest in a way um, that we were never able to as kids growing up. And then we got some original advertisements here. Street Fighter II Turbo for Super Nintendo. We have Super WrestleMania. We have Look, I'm on Game Boy Camera, which is one of my favorite memories that I, I have. My brother and I would go to Sears with our parents and we'd play with the Game Boy Camera. And these all came from comic books and I got those from eBay as well. This is the original registration card for our Nintendo 64 Game Shark. Game Shark was basically a Nintendo cartridge that you put in and then put another Nintendo cartridge on top of it and it would give you access to all sorts of cheat codes. So that was something that we absolutely needed to have when we had our N64. Now we move down here and we have my original Nintendo Game Boy Color. You can see that beautiful retro see-through plastic that uh, sadly does not exist anymore. The 90s was such a special time for aesthetic. Had the hand grip that matched and everything. So that's the original Game Boy Color that I had growing up. Not something I talk about a lot, but I'm a huge Shy Guy fan. Shy Guy is part of the Super Mario world. The reason I like Shy Guy is because my wife's name is Cheyenne and I'm Shy's guy. Obviously I started collecting that once I made that little connection. We have a Nintendo 64 collectible. As you can see a Nintendo collectible tag there, Donkey Kong. Um, I'm not really sure where I got him, but I got him a number of years ago, but he's basically in mint condition and obviously just adds a beautiful piece of nostalgia. These two are hand puppets um, from Eureka's Castle, which was a kid's show that I used to watch when I was little. I believe it was on Nick Jr. Then we go ahead and move into the video games that I collect. So these are my PlayStation 2 games here. Um, one of my latest ones that I purchased was the Dukes of Hazard: Return of the General Lee, which is why that's on top. These ones here are more of my prized possessions. Uh, Star Wars Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith. We have Batman Begins, Matrix, Path of Neo, Scarface, The World is Yours, 50 Cent Bulletproof, Midnight Club 3 Dub Edition. That was actually the main reason I bought my PlayStation 2 back in the day when the PlayStation 2 first came out because of that game there. It was amazing. I was really into that kind of culture, the high rims, the neon lights, the low-bodied vehicles, the body kits, all of that was huge for me. 
back in high school, and that game was the epitome of dub edition culture. Def Jam Fight for New York. This is a very, very sought after gem. Gosh, I think right now this thing's going for nearly $200 on eBay. I'm a huge wrestling fan, so I have the SmackDown Shut Your Mouth. I have SmackDown vs. Raw 2006, as well as 2007 here. I have the original Grand Theft Auto trilogy for the PlayStation 2. Then down below are some of my lesser ones, but still good games. Like I said, SmackDown vs. Raw 2007. Test Drive Unlimited, Brothers in Arms, Call of Duty, Dead to Rights, Killzone, The Punisher, Mafia, God of War 1, God of War 2, Devil May Cry 2, Devil May Cry 3, a Random Tennis Game, NBA Ballers, and Madden 08. Then we'll move to the right and we have my Nintendo GameCube games. We have WWE Day of Reckoning, WrestleMania 18, Day of Reckoning 2, Legends of Wrestling 2, Medal of Honor, European Salt, Rugrats, Royal Ransom, Namco Museum, which is like uh, Pac-Man and other uh, light games, Need for Speed Underground, The Lord of the Rings, Return of the King, Pac-Man Fever, and Enter the Matrix. And I do have a couple other ones that I'll showcase once I get to that. And then a couple Wii games here, Donkey Kong Country Returns, as well as Super Mario Brothers Wii, and back there is Wii Sports. Next to that, you can see my Super Nintendo and Nintendo console, FC Twin, a two-in-one console. Currently, you can see I have Final Fight for the Super Nintendo. I actually got that for Christmas and Bigfoot for the regular Nintendo. And you can go back and forth using this button here to play either the Super Nintendo or the Nintendo. Then we have my Nintendo Wii console here, and then next to that are some more Super Nintendo games and another Nintendo game. The uh, very well-known Super Mario Brothers and Duck Hunt, but this one also comes with the world-class track meet. So that's really cool. We got Mickey Mouse, or excuse me, Mickey Mania, The Timeless Adventures of Mickey Mouse. We have Disney's Aladdin. Now, if you've never played Super Nintendo, this game is one of the best games you'll ever play on the Super Nintendo, in my humble opinion. My brother and I beat this countless times. It is so much fun. And it's another great thing is that it comes with passwords every single time you beat a level. So if you have to shut off your console, you can come back and jump right back into the level that you were at previously, which is pretty uncommon for some of those games back in the day. We have Jurassic Park. We have Paperboy. And we have Miss Pac-Man. So those are just the Super Nintendo games that I have added to my collection here just in the last couple of months once I, once I bought this uh, Super Nintendo and Nintendo Dual Console. So then we move up here and I got these cool little keychains. We got Wario, we got Mario. Those actually came with the tapestries that I bought, obviously the Mario keychain and the Wario keychain. So shout out to that seller for that extra perk. We open this up and inside you can see our original Nintendo 64, my PlayStation 2 Slim, and my Nintendo GameCube. And as you can see, I have a little CRT TV here, which is what these systems play best on. They look better on a CRT TV. They also look better with it not being an HD TV. The, the outputs just pull out I mean, this is what these games were designed to be played on, which is why I just had to add this to my collection as well. And I actually got this free off of the marketplace. It's amazing what you can find when you search on the Facebook marketplace. And some lady, some lady had this in her garage in a box with the remote and everything and just wanted to get rid of it. And so I went and picked it up completely for free. I mentioned the other GameCube games that I have, so I'll go ahead and showcase those real quick. Now, another thing I just recently found out is these Nintendo GameCube game pouches. Actually, this is 35 bucks. This is worth $35 alone. So these are both worth $70. Had no idea that there was value in these, but sure enough, yep. So yeah, these are just the little game holders. I got the Namco Museum in there. I have Star Wars Rogue Leader, Rogue Squadron 2. I have Legends of Wrestling in there. SSX Tricky is one of my favorite games. I would say if you've never played SSX Tricky, it's probably the best snowboarding game in existence. And this was actually one of the few games that I considered myself to be very, very good at. Usually my brother could beat me at most games that we had, but uh, this game was my, my wheelhouse. I don't know why, I don't know what it was, but that game and I got along really well. 
I got uh, Lego Star Wars. I got World Series of Poker. Pac-Man Fever, Enter the Matrix, Disc 1 and 2. Then NCAA Football 2003. Need for Speed Underground. Dave Mira, BMX Freestyle. That's number two. Lord of the Rings. Hinman. What else we got? It's Dave Reckoning 2. So um, that concludes my GameCube games. Now, a few of the other things that I have around my TV are my Godzilla figure collection. I'm a huge Godzilla fan, have been ever since I was a kid. So this Godzilla here is a Pop Funko from the current iteration of Godzilla. Uh, this is a plush of the original iteration of Godzilla. Uh, then we have this old school figure here. And then I got this figure here, which is just incredibly detailed and incredibly amazing from Seth for my birthday in 2019. So just a few of the little Godzilla things that I have here. Then we go to the next of the TV here and we have this little Kirby. I actually got him this weekend at a flea market in town. And as you can see, it says ask later. If you take his little fry pan and flick it down, there you go, and you just get different answers based on the flick of the wrist. We've got a Bart Simpson figure. We have the OG clamshell cases for a Goofy movie as well as The NeverEnding Story, which is one of my favorite movies of all time. We have an old school Nickelodeon Happy Meal from McDonald's. That is from 92. This is a Rugrats photograph album. And I have just a bunch of old school pictures in there that I've taken throughout the years. I actually got this Kirby keychain through my Nintendo reward points. If you have a Nintendo Switch Online membership, you can earn rewards and earn points through different means. And I was able to cash those in for this. Then we also have Quail Dog from the Nickelodeon cartoon series, Doug. This is the Pop Funko and the imagination is Doug becomes Quail Man and his, his dog Pork Chop becomes Quail Dog. This 3D printed Bigfoot was given to us by a friend of ours. So that's a really cool addition as well. So now we will move to this wall of my office and I have some on card re-releases of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle figures. Actually just bought this one today. It's a fresh release. And the back of their shell, as you can see here, is a storage container. So all of these things in the package that are included with him can fit inside of his shell. And then this is the original re-release of the OG first ever Nin or TMNT figures. So obviously I had to get that. This is one of the, the Superman figures I found online as what I thought was epic enough to be a part of my collection. I don't have any nostalgia ties to this specific figure, but I was always a huge fan of the long haired Superman. And I thought this was just perfect. He is in his iconic suit, the one that so many people recognize. And he also has the original $5.99 price sticker from Kmart and Kmart does not exist anymore. Now, this one here has a cool story to it. This is Road Champs Iowa Highway Patrol car. And one thing was when I was a kid, my uncle was an Iowa State Patrolman and I always wanted to be an Iowa State Patrolman. I went to college to be in law enforcement. I am currently in the process of collecting all of the Iowa Highway Patrol and Iowa State Patrol Road Champ cars on card. So this is the first of I think three that I'll be getting. And then down here is one of the strangest, most surprising pieces of my collection because I didn't even know this was a thing, but I found this at What Cheer earlier this year and it is a Walker Texas Ranger replica of his Dodge Ram pickup. And I was a huge Walker fan when I was growing up. We watch that with my parents all the time. So then we'll step to the back area of my office and we'll showcase this first. This is a Hot Wheels van. Um, I actually had this when I was a kid. So I found this recently on card, mint condition, and had to buy it again, just as kind of a nod back to when I was buying this originally in 1998. We got the Ninja Turtles Party Wagon Hot Wheels card there as well. I'm a big Leonardo fan. I was my, more of a Michelangelo fan growing up, but Leonardo was always the figure that I leaned towards to get. 
got a Super Shredder, Funko Pop uh, Super Shredder as well. So it's really cool to see those together. Also, we have the Leonardo, the movie Leonardo, the original Leonardo, just in a much bigger scale. This Leonardo, if you look at him, he is literally the exact figure as this Leonardo, if we can get the lighting right, is this Leonardo, but just a much grander scale. Got a couple other figures here. We got uh, Spider-Man and the Shocker. Then over here, we got a lanyard from Ali Law, which is one of my favorite uh, YouTubers from the UK. This painting here, it has a long story, a very personal story um, that uh, my wife and I did. Um, but because of all the colors, it just fits perfectly in my office. Lanyard from my high school, Pomeroy Palmer. I used to wear this bling bling necklace, I called it, all the time when I was in high school. I have an original uh, McDonald's luggage tag. I have a Matt Cardona autographed picture as well as a Brian Myers autographed picture. These guys do a podcast known as the Major Wrestling Figure Podcast, which actually ignited a lot of the fire that I have to collect the way I do now. So thank you to my brother for both of those. These are Letterman jacket patches. The top one, the P, Pomeroy Palmer, is one that I earned for choir when I was in high school. And the Rocco City Linton one, the RCL, is just because that's the hometown that I grew up in, Rocco City Linton. And uh, that high school no longer exists. And I did attend there when I was in pre-kindergarten. So just again, another nod to my past. Then we have a couple Kratos figures from the God of War series on PlayStation and beyond. Um, we have a Norwegian flag for I am Norwegian, and he proudly displays that flag here in my office for me. Then we have the office Funko Pops. We have Dwight on the left. We have Michael Scott in front, and we have Andy Bernard in the sumo suit behind him. And then one of my favorite things here, Funko started to do these mini diorama sets, and this is the office, as you can see. So we have Dwight here, we have Michael, and Daryl, Jim, Pam, and you can see the entire office there. Then we'll move to the McDonald's section of my collection. I love McDonald's things. I just recently picked up this little, it's Fisher Price. It's a Fisher Price Happy Meal that they had released. I'm not really sure what year this was from. Uh, looks like 96. Um, and I got this for our son for tubby time so he can enjoy McDonald's as well. I have some other old school Happy Meal toys here. These are like Transformers. They turn into characters, but they also turn back into uh, the different items that they sell. So we got the loaf that milk, the ice cream cone, the drink, we have the hot cakes. This is a hot meal box from the 80s. The meal actually came inside of this. It's plastic. And obviously we know that generally Happy Meal boxes are cardboard, but this was a special occasion and they came with that. Inside of that is a Thai Beanie Baby Happy Meal toy, still in the plastic from the 90s. Now this here was a very special item. This was uh, released in later part of 2022 as part of the adult Happy Meal collection. Um, there was a collaboration with another, another brand that McDonald's did and they created these very unique Happy Meal toys, but they were marketed to adults because they're marketing to that collector. And as you can see, we got a couple more of the little things. We got some Happy Meal train toys here. They've done that several different times. It's several different variations. I'm a huge Childish Gambino fan and Donald Glover fan, and he played Lando Calrissian in the Solo film. So I have a Funko version of him as well as the Black Series figure of him as well. Then we have the gold-plated Wonder Woman from Wonder Woman 84. I just saw that and it was super discounted, so I thought it would be a cool addition. On the right-hand side, we have the characters from Office Space. And in the center here, we have the TV show Ish Creek is what I say because technically you're cussing if you say the actual name, but it's called Ish Creek. Um, we have Moira, Alexis, and David Rose. Hilarious show from Canada. Then we have The Mandalorian, which is one of our, our favorite shows on Disney+. Plus. I'm a massive, massive Scarface fan, so I have a couple Scarface figures. I do have a couple that aren't um, currently being shown. Um, they're just stored away right now. And then we have The Licorice King from Candyland, as well as a Bugs Bunny Funko. We'll move over to the main section of my office here, which is my wrestling figure collection. As you can see, it, it spans quite a space up the wall and uh, is very, very intricately put together. 
I wanted to be able to showcase everything that I have, but also it was a bit of a struggle to find a space for everything, except for the Batman Forever figures. Those are tech, obviously not wrestling related. I just needed a place to showcase them and, and this one as well. We have everything from Darby Allen and Santana and Dean Malenko. We have the Edge figure. We have some micro brawlers from the Major Wrestling Figure Podcast specialty box an original Undertaker plush toy that actually plays his theme song when you squeeze him. Some late 90s figures from WCW for Kevin Nash. We have the AW figure of Matt Hardy. And we also have The Fiend. Then up here, we got an Eddie Guerrero figure, Macho Man figure, John Cena figures there, a couple. One open, one on the card still. The Outsiders with, so we have this packaging here. This is a thumb wrestling uh, contraption. It's actually from my uncle. And he still managed to keep the package after all these years of having it. You grip the handle here and here. And then as you wrestle and your hand clips down on there, the bell goes off, counts one, two, three, music plays. It's really, really cool. Obviously, I'm a Sasquatch hunter and a Bigfoot hunter. And obviously, I love Bigfoot, which is, if you remember, the Nintendo cartridge I have over there is of Bigfoot as well. Seth and I were big fans of the Bigfoot monster truck. And obviously that turned into something even more than we realized it would. So I have to have those on display as well. I'm a big DDP fan. These are both DDP figures here as well as this one here. Not only of him as his wrestling, but I'm also a huge fan of his workout program, uh, DDPY, otherwise known as DDP Yoga. But then the biggest portion of my collection is my Hollywood Hulk Hogan and Sting collection. So you can see I have multiple Hollywood Hogan figures all spun around. I actually have an original um, 1980s like Pilsner cup with Hulk Hogan on it. Um, just several different things that I've added on into my collection over the years. Some of them a lot newer than others. Some of them um, are original to me and others that I've just purchased secondhand. And we'll just continue to move up here. I got these two figures, this one here and this one here. Again, off the marketplace, I paid 10 bucks a piece for those, which is an absolute steal. Uh, this Pizza Ranch container, this holder here, is actually a napkin holder, and the thing that would hold salt, pepper, Parmesan cheese, and hot red pepper flakes at a Pizza Ranch restaurant, and I worked at one when I was a kid, and it was my very first real job, and I actually remember using these exact same things, which they don't use anymore because they've rebranded and it looks very different now, um, so I needed to add that, plus I needed a place to put the uh, the Outsiders as they are taking over WCW. So you can see I have Kevin Nash, Scott Hall, and obviously Hollywood Hulk Hogan here in the center, cutting a promo on the microphone. Continue moving up here, and we have some more Sting figures. Sting is officially signed with AEW now. So I have the Sting figures that have been released thus far for him, as well as an old school WCW Sting figure still on card, and then another uh, AEW Sting Fig. The masters of the WWE Universe, basically He-Man figures, and they did Sting. I have an old WCW uh, Hulk Hogan. We have Kane from the same universe as the Sting Fig. Pentagon Jr., who's actually known as Penta El Zero Miedo now. Um, this is his very first AEW Fig. I've been watching this man specifically in Lucha under Underground and was one of my very favorites and still is. I have a signed Randy Orton figure and a CM Punk figure. Now there is a high probability this will be the only AEW figure released with CM Punk, just based on some current drama and controversy. So we may never see another AEW CM Punk figure, which is a huge reason why I made sure I got this. And then at the top of my wrestling figure collection is Mr. Brody Lee. This was the very first figure that was released for Mr. Brody Lee after he passed away suddenly. So that's at the top, the entire collection there. So you can get a, a whole view of this section of the office right there. Pretty big. Now we just recently added a few more things to the old collection. I found this recently at a flea market, Batman Return returns figure. It's the Michael Keaton Batman and he actually becomes Bruce Wayne. And then obviously you can put that back and I got him for a dollar. So he comes with other things. If you were to actually get him mints on card, he would have accessories and things like that. Got this from my buddy, Mike Holman. This is an original 1998 Sting mask. He claims that he got this the night that Sting debuted the Wolfpack 
Sting makeup, the red and black makeup. And he sent that to me just recently. So Mikey, thank you for that, my brother. A huge Elvis fan as well. And he got this from Elvis Week in 2000. I'm an Elvis fan with uh, different things you could watch back at the time. And then some shrink wrapped Elvis newspapers from back in the day as well. I'm a huge ALF fan, so I got this ALF puppet. This was a Burger King special. There were several of these in the line and you can collect all of them, all for the many faces of ALF. So there's that. Then we have my wrestling buddies. We got uh, Hollywood Hulk Hogan. We got Sting. These are clearly my bed ornaments because obviously every grown man should have Hollywood Hulk Hogan and Sting to greet their guests on the guest bed. Now we're getting pretty close to being done here. This was showcased in my latest treasure hunting video, the ECW World Heavyweight Championship belt that was bought for my son. And then I just recently added this Kenny Omega figure to my AEW lineup as well. Now the last section here is possibly surprising to some, but uh, if you know me well enough, you know that I'm a massive NSYNC fan. So we'll go left to right. Up here we have two NSYNC VHS tapes, making the tour as well as the in, in the mix official home video. This was marketed with the very first NSYNC album. We also have, which I did not know until very recently, the NSYNC Get to the Show Nintendo Game Boy game. Game Boy Color game, mind you. And I will splice in some footage here because this game is ridiculous and it's crazy what they used to make video games about and how they used to make video games back in the day. It is a very, very, very unique video game for sure, especially with the NSYNC brand on it. Now next to that, we have a California Raisin figure that I had growing up. We have a cat dog stopwatch from Burger King Kids Club. We have a Beauty and the Beast figures. These are both released from Burger King as well. And then we have the cast of the Burger King Kids Club, which was another thing that I loved when I was growing up. Just huge nostalgia factor here. And as we back out, you'll see that I have the 2021 Funko Walmart limited edition exclusive release of the NSYNC crew as Funko Pops. I love it. It's one of my favorite things that I have in here. And then I just recently for Christmas got this NSYNC Pop Odyssey picture. We have the Dare to Keep Kids Off Drugs pennant. That pretty much wraps it up, kids. Again, this is where all the magic happens. This is where I edit everything. It's where I film a lot of my lives or all my live streams and film, you know, different kind of videos at my desk. We're just gonna give you a whole view here one last time of everything as one piece and this will continue to grow and evolve as I continue to grow and evolve I have plenty of blank space in here still that I am working to decorate with so we will see how that uh, that all gets shaped up but for now I'm gonna go ahead and cut it off and bid you farewell hopefully you guys enjoyed this Final, finally getting to see this, this uh, the view of my collection here. Um, it's been really, really fun to build this and add to it throughout the years and continue to do so in the future. So as always, it is all me and no foot. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and we will see you in the next one.